Support ruined Overwatch. My name is Iron. I'm a Contenders player. I've been playing Overwatch for around seven years. Probably have around seven to eight thousand hours. I've won Contenders twice in Overwatch One. I've ended rank one in Overwatch Two on tank. I've played this game a lot. I started playing in August 2016, and I've seen the sad decline of this game. The heroes that led to the decline of the game are in the support role. In this video, I will talk about Overwatch 1 and 2, and how support led to 5v5, and all the issues that 5v5 has. There's no better place to start than the beginning. But we are going to be starting a little bit after that. And, oh, I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. At the end of 2016, the newer support hero was Ana, and the support lineup looked like this. Ana, Lucio, Mercy, Symmetra, and Zen. The absolute most healing you could have would be Ana using Nade and Transcendence, but Trank is an ult. So without ults, the most healing you could have would be Ana Nade plus Lucio Ampio. There was barely any forms of AoE healing. AoE is area of effect. Lucio's healing aura was AoE, and Mercy's beam is single target. Some people don't know, so... Anyway, the point here is that there's not a lot of healing in early Overwatch. And the meta isn't even the comp with the most healing. Back then, Lucio Zen was meta, and that transitioned into Mercy Zen, even before Moth meta came around. At this point in the game, anyone can carry on any role because of the lack of healing. Incoming damage from all roles felt way more impactful, and mistakes from players were much easier to punish. The lack of immortalities like Lamp and Suzu made securing kills much easier and players at all levels felt rewarded. Mercy's res was very strong, but still had counterplay. I still believe after all these years, Ana is the best hero they've added post-launch. Now back then, Ana's nade did double healing to allies, and eventually people realized with a lot of tanks, this was very broken. So on January 24th, 2017, Ana's nade was reduced to only 50% more healing instead of 100%, with the developer notes reading, the healing boost from Ana's Biotic Grenade was providing too much healing, especially when used on targets with large health pools. So tanks. The devs saw an issue with healing and nerfed it. Beautiful. This was the first sign of AoE healing and tanks together. Surely they catch on to this early, right? Heroes never die. It's rework day, and somehow Mercy just became more unfun to play against in 5 man res. September 19th, 2017, Valkyrie is Mercy's new ultimate, and her res is on her E. The combo is res, Valk, res again, and then when you're in Valk, your res is a 10 less second cooldown, so 20 seconds. You can almost like triple res. These players just cannot stay dead. She also moves at the speed of light in Valk. That's pretty fun. Kills are feeling very meaningless at this point. You make a play, secure a kill, and they res instantly. Okay, you get two kills. While Mercy uses res, pops Valk, and uses res again. She has an almost 100% pick rate in all elos, and is an absolute must pick in the Overwatch League. This is even more frustrating than a 5-man res, because this version of her kit has pretty much no counterplay at all. Res cannot be denied, because as soon as you get a kill, they're already alive again. I guess you have to click on her head or something. I don't know. The best way to counter Mercy? You click on her head. Oh my, the, the, my blood boils in my head. Mercy is a low skill support, which was fine before the rework and is still fine now because she has drawbacks. But at this point in the game, she is too strong for her skill ceiling and too strong in general. She is so strong right now that many people are being inflated to ranks they wouldn't normally be without buffs like these. She's overtuned. But after four months of double res, mock speed Mercy, she received a nerfed but the moth isn't dead yet. She's still very strong, but nowhere near as broken as she was. Dealing with one res is much more tolerable, and the added resurrection cast time means denying res is actually possible now. Even though she's still strong after these nerfs, Blizzard did a good job here, and it only took four months to mitigate her strength. Four months may sound like a long time, but compared to the future to come, four months is like a blessing. Two instances where Blizzard has intervened on the strength of supports. Not too bad. Surely this becomes a trend, right? At this point, Doomfist and Orisa are out, and Mora is the newest hero on the roster. Mora's Orb, Grasp, and Cole are all AoE healing abilities. Mora is a low skill hero, 
but it's fine because she has drawbacks. Now that Moth Meta is weakened and a new AoE healer was released last year, it's time for a new comp, Quad Tank. This comp is very simple. Play four tanks with more Lucio, use Heal Orb, left click, build Cole, and go. This comp is basically the lower skilled version of GOATS, which we'll get to very soon. Now there's one team infamous for Quad Tank, Biweek. Quad Tank was seen more as a cheese comp back then, and was still beatable by better players on more difficult comps like Dive. However, this comp should have been yet another warning sign for Blizzard on the potential dangers of tanks and AoE healing, like the Onanade nerf earlier in the year. Well, Blizzard didn't really get the warning signs. With all the outgoing going on in Contenders and Trials, Mercy Zen was still the best support comp. However, a new hero was released on March 20th, 2018. Her. Brigitte. Brig was a melee support hero and another AoE healer with her passive ability Inspire that did 80 healing over 5 seconds anytime she hit someone with one of her attacks. She had an incredibly broken ult that gave 150 AoE armor that didn't decay, not even to mention her single target healing pack that could heal 150 HP or give up to 75 armor of overhealth with no aim required. Brig was another low skill support, but the problem was that she got too much value for the level of skill required and too much value in general, just like Moth Mercy. There needs to be trade-offs if a hero doesn't require a lot of mechanics. Brick has no downsides. Again, like Moth Mercy, a lot of people were boosted to GM and top 500, or just boosted to higher ranks they didn't deserve because of this hero. Now some people probably don't understand why armor is so strong in Overwatch. The TODR is, armor is better health, and Brick gives a lot of it, so it's just broken. In Overwatch 1, Armor blocked 5 damage from every attack that did 10 damage or more. So if Genji Shurikens did 28 and he hits all 3, instead of doing 84 damage he would do 69. More than half of Shuriken's damage gone. This may not sound like a lot, but it adds up. Look, armor is broken, that, that's what matters. It's better health, it's just broken. Brick could also bash through shields. And with her bash, swing, whip combo, she could one shot Tracer. It's not like this combo was hard to do either, it was very easy. Blizzard released Brig because they wanted to quote unquote counter dive, and they did a little too well of a job. This was the start of support heroes that really just had it all. Like I said, no downsides. Ghosts was founded on May 29th, 2018, when Ghosts were playing against Envision Esports. The man that figured it out was Tensa. I'll let him give a brief history of Ghosts. We were playing against um, Envy, and they were running double sniper Orisa. Mercy Zen, I think. And that team was just better than us at snipers. And we lost to them pretty handily. So in my head, I'm like, okay, we kind of have like a ragtag team. We're like all really good, but we're not as good as that team at snipers. We're, we're like pretty good at dive, but like dive was kind of hard to play into it. So I was like, okay, why don't we just play like tanks and supports and just run it down on them on the snipers. They, like the snipers can't one shot the tanks. So I was like, do we need to find we need to find a way where we can just play something and just run it down on them. The the original concept of goats was literally just run it down with three supports, three tanks, super high sustain, just play as fast as possible. That was like the original exception. It was like Lucia, Brig, Moira, not like with Zen. You literally just run it down. High sustain, aka lots and lots of healing, and run it down. This comp changed Overwatch forever. If Brig were never released, Roll Lock and Roll Q would have never happened. 5v5 would not exist. But I'm getting ahead of myself. People didn't fully realize Brig's potential at this point. In the playoffs of the inaugural season of the Overwatch League, Goats was only played on a few points on a few maps. But they would learn. We would all learn. Now previously, the exceptionally overpowered moments in supports history, like Honest Nade and Moth Meta, were nerfed with some relative speed. Four months for a major nerf to Mercy may seem like a long time, but let's put things into perspective. Brig could bash through shields for six months. And this didn't even change GOATS meta. GOATS was here to stay. Blizzard stopped fixing the overpowered supports quickly and the game started to go downhill drastically. Not just talking about GOATS. Now the general pro player consensus is that GOATS was good, but went on for too long. And I agree with this statement, however, a lot of normies do not. Jake on the far, this combo 
Astros worked well for them before, but as soon as they see the defensive setup, they will just simply swap it away. Crucial time lost here for the outfield. Well, it's early 2019, and GOATS has been meta for months now. Briggs has been nerfed numerous times, and we are still in GOATS meta. At this point, the Briggs nerfs were not enough, and there was just a fundamental design flaw with this character. Now here's what Blizzard should have done. A vault. Vaulting something is when you put it away in a safe place and come take it out later. That's what needed to happen with Brig. Take her out of the game, rework her kit, and implement her back in later. Simple. Now I'm aware this isn't necessarily good for a company to do, but if a hero is so unbalanced that you have to fundamentally change how Overwatch is played, I think a temporary removal would be the better option. And yes, I'm talking about Rollock. Brig was simply not balanceable with the ability she had in the open Q rule set. And Blizzard just gave up. August 13th, 2019, 2-2-2 is in the game. This is one of the biggest reasons why Overwatch died. This right here is why 5v5 exists. This moment was the real beginning of the end. Briggs' introduction led us here, but this change would have serious ramifications in the future. The reason is queue times. This fundamental alteration of how Overwatch was played caused the ripple effect that led us to where we are now. Blizzard didn't know what to do. Ghost was running rampant for too long and the community had had enough. So they made us so you can no longer play any other comp in quick play, ranked, and pro play besides 2-2-2. This was before open queue was added back as a separate game mode. Overwatch was different now. And it wasn't like when they added hero lock, only one of each hero on each team, this was serious. So many potential comps and ideas were gone. They were limiting you on how you play the game because they made Brig and wouldn't Vaulter. Ghost was already on its way out naturally, but Blizzard shut it down themselves. People were figuring out how to beat Ghost. Shock had just lost to Shanghai playing Ball, Doom, Fair, Summer vs Ghost, but it didn't matter. 2-2 was already here and it was here to stay. And I know a lot of normies make arguments against open cube even before goats. But Iron, it was just 5 DPS every game and I had to go with Mercy. I'm sorry, but I just don't believe you. Like I said, I've been playing the game for 7 years, and I'm aware this did happen. But not nearly as much as people swear it did. Even so, the 5 DPS 1 Mercy issue was solvable. And it wasn't 2 2 2. The solution was preferred Q. I believe if Blizzard vaulted Brig and made Preferred Q, Overwatch would have grown to one of the biggest games in esports and to the casual audience. Preferred Q, which is similar to Lee's rule Q system, would allow you to pick a main rule like Tank and a secondary, not necessarily preferred, but able to flex to role like DPS or support. Because that's what Overwatch was like back in the day. In the early seasons of Overwatch 1, I played D.Va, Zarya, Genji, Tracer, Soldier, and Ana, mainly because they were fun but also because only playing one role back then wasn't realistic and ranked. If you wanted to climb to the highs of top 500, or in any rank, flexing was something you had to do. A lot of times, people would have to flex and that was a great part of the game. I know people loved the option to be able to switch roles mid-game, but after 2-2-2, the roles were sealed. There was no real reason to play multiple roles anymore until the addition of priority passes. The way I believe Preferred Q should have worked was trying to get at least one tank support and DPS on their preferred role and potentially one tank support and DPS on their secondary role if the Q was getting too long. Ideally, it would be 2-2-2, two, 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 everyone on their preferred roles, but for Q times, you know, people would have to fill. And that's fine. Even if you were on your preferred role, you would still be able to switch off. Triple DPS, triple tank, triple support, 4-1-1, whatever, would be playable especially if the enemy's comp or if the map depended on it. Even if you just wanted to switch mid-game, you would still have the freedom to do that. But with the preferred queue, this would have prevented 5-1. Some games like in League, you will have to fill, but this was Overwatch in its golden era, and filling was a part of that. This would have made queue time slightly worse than open queue, but still would have been much better than 2021 and 2022, where the DPS queue times were 20 minutes and tank would insta-queue because no one wanted to play the role but we haven't even gotten to why people didn't want to play tank yet. Another major ramification of 222 was three leaderboards. Imagine 1,500 challengers, 300 top jungle mid ADC and support challengers. Sounds ludicrous, but it's the world we live in with Overwatch. Realistically, it should be called top 1,500, or there should only be one leaderboard. Now straight away. Be desperation Shoe? now for the gladiator. Shoe's turning it with his ant matrix. Two. With the ant matrix Shoe. on the back. Jimmu's been taken out. I don't believe that. 
You have got to be kidding me. Third AoE healer Baptiste was released on March 19, 2019. However, this was during Goat's Minette, and he was only experimented with, but mainly stayed on the sidelines. Baptiste was released with the first Immortality. Yes, Immortality is now in the game. An ultimate level ability that is a 20 second cooldown. People were already upset because Ghost was hard meta for so long, and now we have a hero that can make you immortal. Wow. Immortality is one of the most unfun things to play against, and it was on a 20 second cooldown. But was it really a 20 second cooldown? If Lamp lasts 8 seconds and the cooldown starts as soon as you press E, that sounds like a 12 second cooldown to me if it's used correctly, and at the top level, it definitely was. Why was Immortality even added to the game? If Lamp was just a 75% damage reduction feel, this would have been infinitely more fun to play against. Lamp also technically heals because of the minimum HP threshold. When in Lamp, your health cannot be lower than 25% at this time, so a clutch Lamp will also heal you. His shift healed 150 over 5 seconds and his biotic rifle has some of the best damage and healing in the game even to this day. On release, 25 damage per bullet, 3 round burst, so 75 damage, not even including headshots, and his gun has AoE splash rounds that heal 60 per shot. 6 people stacked on each other being healed by a Baptiste is 300 per shot. 300 healing per shot. And that's how double shield and goats were played. Everyone stacked on each other. Compare this to early Overwatch, compared to the 60 healing per second of Mercy's Beam. Bap has two AoE healing abilities and an AoE immortality field, not even to mention his ult, which doubles all healing. 600 healing per shot. 10 times Mercy's Beam. We're not even close to the same game anymore, not even to mention Window doubles all damage that goes through it as well. Bap has his exo boosts that give him great mobility. What doesn't he have? While Bap is a high skill hero, he was still too broken and is still too broken to this day. These support kits are so overtuned, they have everything and anything you could ask for. Bap can 1v1 any DPS in the game, his hitbox is weird, and crouch AD spamming is broken. Top level players on Bap is a DPS that can also heal a few thousand per minute and make you invincible. At this point in the game, supports are just better DPS, and it's true still in Overwatch 2. Okay, so 2 2 2. Goats is done, some heroes were released Ball, Ash, and Bap. And on the same day 2 2 is released, it's time for Sigma. <laughs> Release Sigma. The universe! It sings for me! The universe! August 13, 2019. Release Sigma, arguably just as broken as Release Brig. He was a monster. 1500 HP shield, Flux was uncancelable even in death, Rock stun duration scaled with distance, hitting two direct orbs would do 120 damage. He's a beast! Like Release Brig, how did it even make it to live servers? How? These past few hero releases really should have made us question Blizzard's testing phase and the lack of pro input. Combine Sigma with the Risa and you have a tank synergy like no other. Double shield. One pro scrim in the developmental phase would have instantly shown how oppressive his release date was in mirrored and unmirrored matchups. And this scrim would have shown how strong Orisa and Sig were together. If you can't tell, even though Blizzard had every pro player in Anaheim for years, they didn't really use them. Sigma is so good in 6v6, you could have removed the shield completely and he still would have been a good tank. Double shield would have never existed. Brig also got reworked this patch and now has 130 healing on Inspire from 90. She now has 3 packs that give 75 armor to full HP targets or 120 healing with the quote unquote drawback that you have to wait 2 seconds instead of instantly being healed. They lowered her shield health a little, reworked whip, and made Rally cost 10% more, but overall, this was a major net positive for Brig. The dev comment says, Since Brig will now be one of only two supports for your team, it is important that she can provide enough healing to be valuable in that role. It seems like Blizzard wanted Brig to be a third support the whole time, but they didn't realize Ghost would become a thing. I guess the signs of AoE healing and a lot of tanks weren't there. Hmm. Sadly, Quad Tank and Otis Nade could not provide the context clues they needed. The playoff comp meta was Sigma or Risa, but no break to be found. There were two other AoE healers being played, because we have so many now, Bap and Moira. Moira Lucio on Koth and 2CP, and Bap Mercy on Hybrid and Escort. Eventually, Sigma ended up getting nerfed by the time 2020 Owl started, and he could finally be rocked out of Flux and had a 900 HP shield. <laughs> 2020 Owl, new season, new meta. Right now, comps are map dependent and Brig is everywhere. 
This 130 inspired break isn't going anywhere for a while, and people are playing her. On a brig, Zen brig, Bap brig, she's everywhere at this point. Bap is nerfed, but he's still incredibly strong, and Lamp is still broken. But at this point, every support is Thanos. The healing output is crazy, and immortality will never be fun to play against. We are now at a point in the game where it is just so hard to get kills. Bap and Brig are still disgustingly oppressive. You can have an amazing mechanical play or ultimate ability completely negated by their Bap pressing E. Good plays don't feel rewarding anymore because all the work put in is too easily counterable. Brig packs make it seem like any target you're fighting has unlimited healing and armor and god forbid you fight her yourself or you'll get bashed, whipped, picked, while giving her whole team inspire. Brig may have killed Overwatch, but Baptiste is dancing at Overwatch's grave, and Brig is dancing with him. How is she still so broken? Really late into 2020, Bap's window becomes a flat screen TV, and Brig's Inspire finally goes down to 90 healing. Also to mention, this year of Owl and Ranked had hero bans, which I think are fine in Overleague, but not for Ranked. Time for a new hero. April 14th, 2020, Echo is now in the game. And now the devs are done. Now, I'm aware a certain thing I can't say on YouTube happened in 2020. However, when the devs were working on Overwatch, it was not on Overwatch 1. It was for a soon-to-be-canceled PvE game called Overwatch 2. Even though Overwatch started as a failed PvE game, which led to the original 2016 Game of the Year PvP game, Overwatch. I know Blizzard made WoW and they love PvE and all, but if it didn't work years ago and you guys actually made something amazing, why go back? Why abandon one of your greatest successes for something that crumbled in its early inception? I don't see the logic behind that. It's decisions like these that make me wonder, did Blizzard get lucky with Overwatch 1? Okay, now Echo's in the game, and we will receive no new content until October 20th, 2022. Awesome. Yeah, the colors are great. In 2021, the tank queue time is very short because no one wants to play double shield. And that's fair. Now I'm aware, Sigma isn't a support, and I know his release date was a serious problem. But after Sigma was nerfed, double shield was only so strong because of the AoE healers like Baptiste and Brig. Although it was mainly Bap, because Brig was changeable from Mercy and Zen. Bap now has a window the size of an IMAX screen, which is also one of the fastest charging ults in the game, a regenerative burst that's amazing, good movement with his exo boots, and incredible damage even without window, can duel any DPS with his janky hitbox, like, he has it all, he has it all, he has it all. His healing was changed from 60 splash to 50, however, now directs to a bonus 20 healing, so 70 for one target, and 50 splash on the others. Bab could heal 40 splash and do 20 direct for a total of 60 healing and he would still be good. His damage numbers could be nerfed and he would still be so strong. Bab is a DPS that can heal and heal a lot. This support just has it all man, he has it all. And don't worry, this support having it all issue will continue into Overwatch 2. Imagine trying to play double shields with only Mercy, Zen, Ana, and Lucio. It would be playable, but it would be nowhere near as strong, especially in the lower ranks. Double Shield was definitely strong in high ranks and in pro play, but it was beatable on Ball Zen Dive, Monkey Ana Dive, Ryan Rush, and other comps. It was very map dependent. Double Shield mainly terrorized the lower ranks. The AoE healing of mainly Baptiste kept that comp so strong for so long. Brick certainly didn't help with Inspire and Rally, but it was mainly Bap. And if he wasn't in the game or if he was heavily nerfed, that comp would have lost so much power and people would have had a much easier time dealing with it. The undoubtedly best comp of 2021 slash 2022 was Zen Brig. Oh my god, it's just a duo. For Rizzle. This support comp with Ball and Sombra was disgustingly oppressive. And Sombra needed Nurse too, she was incredibly overtuned. But, you know, whatever, Blizzard. Even in 222, Brig finds a way. But let's be real, no one thought she wouldn't. These AoE supports that did too much have been holding this game hostage for years and Blizzard still won't do anything about it to this day. The Zen Brink comp doesn't actually have that much healing compared to Bat Brig, but the damage the comp outputs plus the survivability with Pax, Inspire, and Matrix from D.Va or Sig made it the strongest comp at the end of Overwatch 1. 
If they win double shield, you could also swap off Rig and go back for even more damage and healing, and out spam their shields and tanks while your ball disrupted them. And then mortality and packs are still unfun to play against. Who would have thought? Twenty twenty one Overwatch League playoffs. A very entertaining tournament to watch, but something interesting was available for the players there. When the Western teams that went to Hawaii for playoffs were knocked out of the running, they were able to play test Overwatch 2, and the new way to play was 5 versus 5. When the players were done, they were asked to give anonymous feedback on what they thought, and let me tell you, the comments were not positive. Many of the comments read, please do not do this, and this is a mistake. These comments fell on deaf ears, and once Blizzard says their mind is something, it's done. This is one of the few times Blizzard actually utilized the pro players, and they didn't even listen to them. The broken consensus back then was that 5v5 was bad and that it was obvious Blizzard had not considered all the implications of removing a tank from the game. But oh well, Overwatch 2 was inevitable. I am inevitable. So nothing really happened in early 22 for Overwatch 1, but before we talk about Season 5 of the Overwatch League, 5v5 has to be addressed. I think it's horrible now, could have been pretty good, but could have never been anywhere close to as amazing as 6v6 was. A lot of CC and shields were removed, which is fine, I think that's good, but this could have been done with two tanks. People were complaining about double shield, not two tanks and the synergies they have like Monkey Diva and Ryan and Zarya. These are some of the most enjoyable comps to play. Having only one tank heavily lowers the skill ceiling and complexity of the game, and the only reason it was done was to make queue times better, because no one wanted to play tank. Instead of removing Orisa or Sigma shield in Overwatch 1, incentivizing people to play other, more enjoyable tanks, they just removed the tank. They, they just removed the tank. It's just gone. And in 5v5, the tank rule is now absolutely miserable because of counterpicking. Look at Overwatch League 2023. Florida literally counterpicked the whole entire playoffs and won the league. If there isn't a hard meta in 5v5, counterpicking will always be a problem. If one tank is countered in 6v6, at least your other tank can help you and you can still play. But in this game, if you're on D.Va and they go Zarya, what do you do? If you're on Monkey and they go Hog, what do you do? None of this would have been necessary if we never went to 2 2 in the first place. Blizzard creates these absurd problems like Brig, and they have to make crazy solutions like 2-2-2, which lead to other problems like queue times, and now it's just a snowball effect. They removed the tank from the game instead of just removing shields or nerfing support. Like, they could have removed the reason shield, but they're like, let's just remove a tank from the game. Like, Blizzard makes an issue. Like, like they do something wrong, and they do some crazy, like, ridiculous fix. It's like, oh, I got a, I got a cut on my arm. Let's just cut your arm off. Like, I got, I got, I got a scab. Uh, let's just cut the arm off. Why not? And then, like, the issue come back, comes back later, like, oh, I kind of need this arm, no? And then, like, well, I don't know how we're going to fix this. So, so, like, I know, let's cut off the leg and put it where the arm is. And then it's like, wait, but I kind of need my leg. Like, they just do, like, they make some crazy, they do something delusional, and they give a delusional, like, fix to it. It's just crazy. It also seems like the devs didn't really understand how much the off-tank role balanced the game for them. With the D.Va, Sig, or Zarya in the lobby, off angles can be contested so DPS and supports can't just do whatever they want, like Sojourn and Kiriko do now, and we will get to Sojourn and Kiriko, do not worry. Ana can't just throw nades and sleep for free. Hanzo can't just wall climb and one shot people. It's harder to get value raising the skill ceiling and rewarding players who dedicate a lot of time to improving, like a good competitive game should. League and Dota are some of the hardest games to pick up and especially to master, but they're also the biggest esports. Although with the Season 9 leagues, it seems like Blizzard wants to lower the skill ceiling by a lot. For those that don't know, Season 9 is rumored to make the, all the projectiles bigger, making them easier to hit and lowering the skill ceiling, while also buffing everyone's HP 20-25% to 25 besides tanks. Speaking of tanks, so many of them are unplayable in Overwatch 2. D.Va and Ball have no identity in this game, and they were debatably the two best tanks at the end of Overwatch 1. Their playstyles do not work in 5v5, and if they don't get reworked, they will never be played consistently above gold. Let's compare the beginning of Overwatch 1 to the end. Way less healing, way less CC, way less shields, and no immortalities. We could have gone back to this point with two tanks, and people would have rejoiced. It seems like Blizzard lost touch with what made Overwatch such a good game in the first place. I know a lot of people from the original Overwatch team either left or got laid off, but there are still a lot of people that remember what Overwatch was like and would be willing to work for Blizzard or to just give feedback. Other companies hire ex-pro players to their balance teams, and I think that this really helps out the games. In 5v5, when someone gets picked on your team, 
fights feel almost impossible to win. Just go for trades and reset or wait for your guy to come back. 5v6s and even 4v6s were turnable in Overwatch 1, but a 4v5 is a fight already lost. With less shields and matrix in the game, Sojourn can get picks very easily, making 4v5s incredibly common. Why can Junkrat still one shot if there's no shields and matrix anymore? How does that make any sense? If a character has a low skill floor and ceiling, that's fine. Some heroes are easy, but there needs to be drawbacks. Same with Bastion, same with Roadhog. But we can't talk about 5v5 without mentioning her. Like I said, with no D.Va in the game, DPS and supports can do whatever they want. So it's time for Sojourn. This ends now. Sojourn is Widowmaker with movement. Slide is incredible, Disruptor Shot had a slow, and, of course, Railgun. Sure, you need to charge it up a bit, but it's inevitable that she will build rail. You get punished for peeking her, and it makes tank especially unfun because you're scared to play the game because you don't want to get your teammates killed. And her ult gives her a full rail every second. Sojourn is Thanos. The craziest thing about Sojourn is when OW2 was released to the public, Blizzard would not nerf her because she was weak and gold. Proper was putting on a clinic in the Overwatch League, but because Sojourn was bad where people don't have fingers, she was not nerfed. Not every hero will perform the same in every rank, by the way, Blizzard. Even though she's quote-unquote nerfed now because she can't one-shot anymore, her ult is better than it was back in Season 5 of Owl. Overclock now charges real faster and can be used like a shotgun. But at least she can't one-shot anymore. She only does 190. 190. Thanks, Blizzard. Thanos. Sojourn has been the best DPS in the game for years now, and only took a backseat in Bastion and Sombra meta in the Overwatch League. Alright, let me take a look at this. No, hold on. No, let's just take a peek at it. I feel like you're it. gonna let make fun just... of it. It's not done. It's not done yet. <laughs> did, when did... Is this... Oh, no! What is... Is that a boat? No, it's... I, it's I, a boat with a triangle it's not a in boat. it. No, there's a cop! When the pros first got the beta, it was actually pretty good. Healing was nerfed down significantly, and heroes in the backline could be killed. I won't go over all the changes, you can read them on the wiki, but the game felt pretty close to Overwatch 1 again, healing-wise. But for perspective, people were saying even Brig was balanced at this point. A lot of CC and shields were removed from the game, which I think is great. However, things were not all good because Sojourn was the most broken she ever was at this state, but no one from the public even ever saw. Her rail had no falloff. Her disruptor shot still had a slow, and the damage was so high, if you were caught in it, you were dead. She also had 200 damage rail, and the slow only made this easier to hit. Besides how broken Sojourn was, if there were two tanks during this point with the support, shield, and CC nerfs, Overwatch 2 actually would have been really good. Something funny about the devs is that in 2021 Hawaii, when the people were playing on the alpha, the respawn timers were at 8 seconds, and they stayed 8 seconds all the way until the pros got the beta. The devs didn't even realize that the respawns were on 8 seconds until the pro players told them. I, I don't know how you don't realize something fundamentally changing the game like that, but okay. And my friend upstairs. Well, he's like one of those anarchists that uh, they blew up Wall Street, you know. He's a professional, and he's in charge of the wire. Like I mentioned earlier, Blizzard had every single pro player living in Anaheim, California, and they did not use them as well as they could have. Obviously, pro players aren't going to make the heroes, and Blizzard shouldn't listen to 100% of the things they say. But listening to their input and hiring expert players to work for you is just common practice in esports. But it's obvious Blizzard does not agree with this practice, after the 5v5 test in Hawaii. In the Outdoors Court for Season 5, Blizzard would only respond to minor things like bug fixes or slight changes like Zen only having 225 or Kick, not both. Now don't get me wrong, removing 225 was good, but it was such a small thing compared to the big questions that were being asked like how are you guys going to fix counterpicking or how are you going to fix flavor of the month tanks? A big thing Blizzard ignored was Queen Shout. Practically the whole league was telling Blizzard how busted it was before the stage started, but Blizzard did not tone it down until after. Personally, I think having heroes being broken on release is fine, but the level of brokenness matters. Release Sig and Release Queen Shout were too much. It seems like if Blizzard took pro players' opinions at all seriously, we would not be in the spot we are in today. Counterpicking is still one of the biggest issues in the game for tank that Blizzard has not answered yet. And Flavor of the Month tanks are still running rampant. One month it's Orisa and Hog, then it's Ramatra, then it's Queen, then it's Orisa and Hog again. Yeah, 
Summer Showdown had the introduction of Junker Queen. I'm not going to go over her whole kit, but shout is why she was meta. The speed boot and 100 health that didn't decay was insanely broken. Like I said, I'm fine with heroes being broken or release, and Queen is in a good spot now, but she was way too OP back then. I think her kit is fine and balanceable, and she would have been interesting to play in 6v6. 2022 playoffs introduced the Kiriko. At least she's not an AoE healer, I guess. Uh, but what's great about Kiriko is that she has another immortality. Nice. Another one. Those are really fun to play against. Right? Kiriko's healing of Fuda are a lock-on, and the only aim required is her kunai, which isn't even required in some metas. Like in 2022 playoffs where heal botting was preferred, Kiriko has two get out of jail free cards. Suzu, which makes everyone hit by it invulnerable so no damage can be taken, cleanses status effects, and gives you reaper rays so people can pass right through you. Why doesn't Suzu just remove statuses only? Why does it also have to make you invulnerable from damage and turn you into cast with a friendly ghost? It also heals you too! Her second get out of jail free card is Swift Step, which lets you teleport through space and time to get out of any situation from up to 35 meters away on a 7 second cooldown, enabling the DPS Kiriko playstyle. Swift Step could be on a 12 second cooldown and would still be an S tier ability by the way. She also had the best model in the game and although it was nerfed, it's still one of the hardest to hit. Her kunai did 40 damage but had a 3 times headshot multiplier, so she could headshot a melee tracer and kill her. Another support that has it all, 3 in a row, but at least she's not AoE. Oh, she's so good, I forgot about her ult. Kitsune Rush on release gave bonus movement speed of 50% and 3 times cooldown reduction, so yeah, she was a must pick. Kiriko is another low skill hero with no drawbacks. She's an insane 1v1er that can Suzu and teleport away if she wins or loses. No downsides, still. Oh, she can also wall climb too. I forgot because she can literally do everything, but yeah, she, she can wall climb. Yeah, she's Thanos. Kiriko was so broken that all other supports needed to be buffed to get to her level. I have an army. We have a Maga. <laughs> Now, at this point, we're really close to the present, so let's get Ramatra and Maga out of the way. Ramatra is pretty low skill and boring to play, just another ground tank, and Maga is another ground tank with an even lower skill set than Ramatra. Maga's design is absolutely horrible. Not really much needs to be said about him. His only playstyle is to shoot the other tank or you will die. It's just awful. Zero skill expression and boring to play. I think Maga is Blizzard's biggest failure, character design wise. Ramacha might actually be decent in 6v6 if you tune back his damage reduction, but let's move on. Lifeweaver is another low scaling support hero, but Blizzard wanted this. In an article or blog post, they said they wanted to release more heroes like Mercy that don't require aiming. Although Blizzard does see Lifeweaver as a failure because he was so unusably bad on release. An actual good hero is Alari. Ignoring Lifeweaver, what's the difference between the past 3 supports and this one? Alari is actually killable. Map has exo boots, lamp, and shift. Brick is brick. Kiriko has two get out of jail free cards, but Alari is killable. After her pylon got nerfed, I think Alari is actually really balanced, and that's why she's not good right now. Her outburst, or her shift, doesn't have that much vertical or horizontal distance, so you can actually get on her and stay on her. Lifeweaver and Alari aren't that strong because you can actually kill them. That's how Overwatch used to be. You could kill supports. If Alari or Lifeweaver were released instead of Brig, think about the timeline we would be in right now. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Support is an easy baby to roll with overpowered characters that don't require a lot of skill, and people are still bad at it. Although, people being bad at support isn't a dev issue. That's a people issue. There used to be drawbacks to heroes like Zen, Mercy, Ana, and Lucio, but heroes like Bat, Brig, and Kiriko have no downsides. So because Kiriko was so powerful with the two get out of jail free cards, Suzu, Swift Stab, very good old, movement, kill potential, healing, Jesus, this hero is unreal. Blizzard had two choices, to either nerf Kiriko and bring her down to the other supports, or buff every other support. And you know Blizzard, like they did the wrong thing, of course, they buffed every support, yeah, they buffed every support. Over a few months, every support was getting buffed. Ana got buffed twice in 9 days. Her healing and damage were buffed from 70 to 75, and her nades duration was buffed from 3 to 4 seconds. Kiriko was so broken, they started reverting all the nerfs they made from Overwatch 1 to 2. Lamb's minimum threshold was raised from 10% at the start of Overwatch 2 to 25 now, but that's not even that bad compared to what happened next. The supposed Overwatch 1 killer, Brig, not necessarily denying that she did, but she got the most criminal buffs out of all the supports. First, on January 5th, 2023, her shield was buffed from 250 to 300. Okay, not too bad. Then, on February 7th, 
Packs now instantly heal 25 as soon as you press E on someone with a huge drawback of 55 healing per second to 50. Wow, 25 isn't healing but 10 less over 2 seconds? Good one, Blizzard. Pax also healed 15 more and now Brig had burst healing. That's so awesome. Also, Rally builds 10% faster now too. Why? I, I, why? Then on April 11th, Rally was reworked and they brought her stun back. Like, bro, like what? Like, I don't, like, what? I don't understand. I don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, people really loved playing against Bastion of Watch 1, and now it's back! Sure, it's only on her ult now, but Brooke was already strong at this point, and now she's just better. Also, her shield is now the size of a whiteboard and has more health when you ult. Three patches in a row, and on the third, they really struck out with this one. It's like Blizzard doesn't get that support duos exist. It seems like they balance every character on its solo value only. You combine all these buffs with Inspire, then add Ana's Nade which gives 50% more healing, plus the 100 initial healing from Ana's Nade which wasn't nerfed to 60 at this time. That's like a 720 healing. Like what are you guys doing? I don't understand. And with Ana and Brick having 250 HP each, they're actually going to be able to utilize this 720 healing per second. I mean Ana's Nade is nerfed now, but still, they were generating so much healing that they couldn't even use all of it. Supports are now harder to kill than they ever were in Overwatch 1. And your second take is gone, so a lot of damage is not being done, and heals are not being Matrix. How are we back to the same issues from Overwatch 1, but now it's worse? Nothing is killable. It's not fun to play against on tank or DPS. If you don't hit an Ananade, nothing will die. Kiriko finally ended up getting nerfed, kinda? On August 10th, 2023, Suzu now healed 40 from 50, but I healed an additional 30 when cleansing a negative effect. So really, Suzu heals 70 because so many things count as a negative effect. And a good Suzu is cleansing a negative effect most times anyways. Suzu now heals 80, and with the negative effects change, it really heals 110. How is this hero still getting buffed? I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Even Lifeweaver is a strong pick now because of these buffs. I mean, he's not as strong as Brig, but like, you know, it's not that bad. Lifeweaver's tree is not like a worse rally, and his pull is actually pretty annoying to play against, but nowhere near as bad as Brig. It seems like people don't know how to play support, so Blizzard just dumbs them down to make them OP, so people don't actually have to put in the time to learn and can just automatically be good. Instead of learning positioning, cooldown management, and timing like you required on Ana, Zen, and Bap, you can just hold wherever you want on Kiri, and TP or Suzu away if you're in danger. People will play support if you consistently add new heroes to the role. You don't have to make them the most overpowered characters in the game. Okay, the lighting's messed up now, but I don't really know what happened, so it is what it is. The video's almost over anyways. Right now, tank and support are incredibly boring to play. Getting counterpicked on tank has no counterplay besides counterpicking back. Support characters are just DPS that can heal a few thousand trillion million a minute. Blizzard knows something's wrong with the game. That's why they're making all these changes in Season 9, but I don't think Season 9 is the answer. I think these questions need to be answered if Overwatch 2 is going to be successful. How do you fix counterpicking with one tank? Will healing ever be nerfed? And will the lower skilled heroes ever get drawbacks so people that put at the time feel rewarded? So yeah, support killed Overwatch, but really, it was Blizzard. Saying Brig killed Overwatch 1 isn't necessarily wrong, but it's like significantly dumbing down what actually happened. Overwatch had a loyal fan base before, during, and after GOATS, but I am aware that a lot of people left during GOATS. Blizzard didn't vault Brig, they didn't manage to do 2 very well, and most importantly, they just abandoned their game. Like, who does that? Everyone loves to scapegoat Bobby Kotick, but I really don't think you can just blame everything on him. I don't think Blizzard has managed any of their games well. WoW, StarCraft, Overwatch 1, seems like Overwatch 2. And speaking of WoW, Blizzard didn't want to release WoW Classic because of, you know, like nostalgia and roast into glass or whatever. But then they did release it and they made millions, so I'm ready for Overwatch Classic. If this game is going to be great again, three things need to happen. One, start listening to the pros and hire expert players. Two, go back to CV6 because tank is not fixable in 5v5. Blizzard committed to 5v5 back in 2021 and they still don't have a solution for counterpicking. It's 2024. The old percentage when swapping change is not going to stop it. And the third one is nerf support. Thanks for watching.